Today, let's go through this support position through to our handstand. Now, obviously this is the big movement going all the way up, showing control and then coming back down again. But how do we break that up into different components and make it accessible to everybody? First, we need to assess what we're dealing with. So what level are you on the different levels? So I have a shoulder stand that allows me to do certain things. I have a handstand on the edge of a wall that allows me to do certain things. I have a lower down to that shoulder stand and come back out. That allows me to do certain things. And then the big one, can you push up to handstand? If you can't push up to handstand from a bent arm position, so crow to handstand doesn't have to be on the edge of the wall, but if you can't do that, obviously we're not gonna work with the concentric movement yet. We're just gonna work with the down phase. And if you don't have the down phase yet, you can start working on that shoulder stand position, whether it's in a tuck or a straddle position, and then the exit back out again, nice and slow. So level one would just be learning that. So keeping the arms in by your side, external rotation. So the upper arm goes into the torso, knees close to your chest, go into that tight tuck. See if you can get up into this position. If you need it, have someone spot you, put their hand on your low back. Then we can advance that shoulder stand position to going into a straight position. Now ideally stepping in and out of it. Once we have that shoulder stand, we can start playing with transitions into it. So going in more controlled, more strength based, in and out. Notice how I'm taking the shoulders and head forwards as the feet come down to counterbalance each other. Then we can add the handstand component in if you have that. So handstand, slow, eccentric down to your shoulder stand, transition out, head come forwards. This, um, this setup works really well because I can come down to here safely. Next level up would be to use the wall. Hey, it's Paul from the future. I had a technical issue with the sound, so I'm gonna take over like this now. So what happens here on the wall, we need to make sure that we're now using lots of external rotation. So I said earlier, that's gonna help with the shoulder stand because it brings the arms into the torso. It gives us like a stopper at the bottom of that shoulder stand. External rotation also makes you stronger. So if I'm gonna do any strength movements in my handstands, whether it's presses or handstand push-ups, I always add that external rotation. It's gonna allow me to take my shoulders further forwards with the movement as well. So when I get up into this position, it's gonna allow me to take head and shoulders over the top. It's gonna to help me to, to round and make the upper back stronger and more of a protracted position. So when I make the transitions there, whether it's into shoulder stand, straight body, or a tuck shoulder stand, it's gonna be more comfortable to do the transitions in and out of that. So you also wanna be able to get up and over the top and towards that protraction to allow you to bring your legs. And then you have that seesaw effect between the shoulders coming down and the hips coming up. If we wanna start playing with going up into handstand, we could use like a kip type movement like they do in CrossFit to get us up into the position. If you struggle with that, obviously don't try and do it on a wall. Make sure you can do it on the floor first. You can practice things like crow to handstand, but work that separately to this. Once we've got up into handstand, if we're there, make sure you're doing a slow eccentric down. So this is where we're gonna get the technique really, really nice with that eccentric, because you're gonna be slightly stronger on the eccentric, and you can show control all the way down to your shoulder stand, then a slow transition, trying to take the shoulders as far forward as you can to counterbalance those legs coming back down. Now, obviously, we wanna have a wall that suits our ability. Have a look around at your parks and stuff. You'll have walls at different heights. You'll have some with grass on either side, you also have some that will have a higher surface on one side than the other. You can use all those things to your advantage to fit your ability. So obviously don't go up on a high wall if you can't do a handstand yet, an elevated surface, and you should always be able to exit with control, with safety on both sides. If you can't do that, practice your exits on the floor, start raising up a little bit at a time, and then slowly build that confidence. I always get my clients to do shoulder stands as soon as possible and get really comfortable in that shoulder stand position. Not only transition in and out from the support positions, but also to exit on both sides. Once you've exited on both sides, at height, you should be pretty comfortable to do the eccentric handstand push-ups to a deficit. And then you just slowly build on that ability to be able to save yourself in different directions when you fall out. Especially if you're gonna work up to doing things like handstand stands on canes, on boxes and things like that. So make sure if you're doing this one that you stay within your ability, find a wall that suits your level. And let me know if you have any questions about this one or anything else down in the comments below. If you're looking for some coaching, www.paultwyman.com.au and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.